Welcome to HTML5 Tutorial 8, Media. In this video, we'll be looking at how to put different kinds of media into our website and start bringing the web pages to life. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. HTML5 supports many forms of media and external content. We have video, we can also use audio for sound effects and music, we can also embed objects like flash players, Java applets, or PDF viewers, as well as the more convenient support for embedding YouTube videos into our pages. We'll see that placing media in our web pages is super easy in HTML5. The video tag. The video tag comes with two parts. First, we have the actual video tag. We can set the width and height that we want the video to, to appear as on our web page, and we also have some attributes that we can set. Unlike some of our other tags, the attributes for media only need to be present, they do not need to be set to a value. The second part of our video tag is the source tag. The source tag must be between the opening and closing video tags. With the source tag, we can set the whereabouts the video is located, and what format it is in. The good thing is, is we can have multiple source tags. If the HTML cannot find the first source, it was un or it was unable to load, the next source tag will be tried, and so on and so forth. We can also put text between our video tags, to show up when the web browser does not support the video tag. In the example, we have a video tag that has controls and autoplay turned on. This means the video will start playing after the page loads, and when you move the mouse over the video, play, pause, and volume controls will become visible. Just like with images, the browser does not know the size of the video, so it's good to set the width and height attributes to, st to avoid flickering on load. It's important to understand that only a few video formats are supported by the HTML5 video tag. This is because they are stream friendly and relatively small file sizes. The most common video format, and one that I recommend, is the MP4 format. It's becoming very popular and is the format used by YouTube. Next we have OGG, or OGG. It's a format that isn't used much for video, but is used a fair amount for audio files. Next we have the final supported video format, which is the WebM format which was developed by a combined effort of Mozilla, Opera, Adobe, and Google. The WebM format is gaining popularity and may even take over MP4 format at some point. Okay, so now that we've looked at the video tag and the supported formats, let's have a go at putting a video into our first web, web page. So let's add a media section and place the video in it. If you don't have a video to use that's MP4, OGG, or WebM, then there will be a 4 megabyte MP4 file in the slides and codes folder in the description. Alright, so let's go over to our website folder, and I've got this media folder that I've created, which inside I have an mp3 and a mp4 video, which I've called vid.mp4. So let's open up our index and edit with Notepad++. Now we'll scroll down to uh, the bottom, after our iframes, and we'll create another section for media. So we'll do h2, uh, and we'll do media. We'll close off our h2, and then we'll do a paragraph, and we'll do video. So this is going to be our little video section. Okay, underneath our paragraph, we're going to use the video tag, and we'll set the uh, width to equal 600, and we'll set the height to equal uh, 338, so 338, and we'll give the attribute uh, controls so we can control the video. Now let's close off the opening tag. Now we'll do our closing tag so slash video and we've got our video tag. Now inside we've got to do our source tag so do source and we'll do SLC for the source attribute and the source we're going to have is going to be in the media folder forward slash and it's the vid.mp4 video, close quotes. Now we've got to specify what format it is, so we use the type attribute, and it's in uh, t type video, forward slash mp4, close quotes, and we can do our self-closing tag on the end of this source. Now we can also write a little message here to say uh, your browser does not support video tags. And this will show up if your browser does not support video tags. Alright, so we've created our video, let's have a look at what it looks like. So we'll come over and we'll open up our index. 
and I'll load up our first page. If we scroll down, we get our media. So it's embedded, it's got a big play button, and we can see we've got volume controls, and we can make it full screen, etc. If we hit play, it'll start playing. So I've just got a Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2 video here, it's just been shortened. And yeah, so we've got a video that works, and cool. We've got our video paragraph as well. Cool, let's come back to our slideshow. Next, we have the audio tag. And truth be told, the audio tag is almost identical to the video tag. However, we don't have to set a width and height. The main difference we will face is when setting up the source tag inside the audio tags. When we set the type of source, we must make it an audio format. In the example, we have an audio clip called chime.mp3, which is, which is of the MPEG format. It has play, pause, and volume controls enabled. Once again, if the browser does not support the audio tag, they will get the message we have written between the audio tags. Ok, just like the video tag, we can only use a few audio formats in the audio tag. So we can use the mp3 uh, audio files, as it's the most popular format for music players and music on the web. It would be very silly if we couldn't use it on web pages. We can also use the WAV format, which is a very old raw audio format. And we can also use the OGG OG audio files. Alright, so let's add an audio file to our media section of our first page. If you don't have an mp3 file, uh, a small one will be available in the slides and codes folder in the description. Alright, so let's jump back over to our code. So just underneath our video, we're going to add another, uh, we'll do a line break, actually. So we'll do br self-close, and then we'll do another paragraph, and we'll specify this is the audio, audio section. Alright. So let's do the audio tag, and because we don't need to set up uh, any width and height, we can just put a space and we can type controls. And we can close off the opening tag. Now we'll do the matching closing audio tag. And inside of our audio tags, we're going to do the source. So we do source, and then we do src equals, and then the location of the file so it's in the media the media folder forward slash and it's the chime dot mp3 that we looked at just before. Alright and now we're gonna set the type. So the type is a audio format this time forward slash mpeg for the mp3 format. Alright now we can do our forward slash and do a self closing uh, tag. Alright so that's our audio embedded. Let's have a look at what it looks like. So I'll come back over to our first page and we'll give it a refresh. And you can see we have the audio player now, which looks very similar to the um, the video player. However, it's just for audio, so it doesn't require a video. And we can press play and that'll play the sound. So it's a quick chime. Uh, I don't think I've got audio coming through in the videos uh, from my computer. It's just purely my voice. All right, so we'll come back to the uh, slideshow. So now we have the object and embed tags. They're almost identical in function. However, they allow us to embed plugins and other self-contained objects into our web pages. The object tag uses, data, uses a data attribute and has more types and sub tags. Whereas the embed tag is a standalone self closes and uses a source attribute. And just like most media and websites, it's good to specify the height and width. The kind of things that we use the object and embed tags for is Java applets, PDF readers, flash players, HTML files, uh, image files, as well as YouTube videos. Alright, let's quickly look at some examples and we'll move on to using the embed tags to put YouTube videos into our web page. Okay, so here in our first example, we have a flash file. This will load the flash file into a 100 by 70 box and we'll use the file myflashad.swf. In the second example, we have an object of HTML code that we want to embed into the web page, which will load the HTML code into that part of the web page and run it. Alright, finally, we have the example of the way you're meant to put a Java applet into a web page in HTML5. 
We tell the browser that the object is a Java applet and we want to specify the height and width. We then set the parameter tags up for the code and we set the value to a Java class in the folder. And we can finally tell the user that they don't have Java installed if it fails to load. Ok, now on to the easy and fun part. Let's embed YouTube videos into our website. To embed a YouTube video, you can either copy in the embed code straight from uh, the YouTube underneath the video you want to share. <coughs> to embed a YouTube video, you can either copy the embed code straight from under a YouTube video under the Share and Embed tab, which will look very similar to the top example here, or we can write the embed ourselves. In the second example, we use the embed tags, we set the width and height, and the source for the video. The YouTube URL is modified to be an embed URL, which is denoted by the youtube.com forward slash v forward slash id. You can get this by hand by replacing parts of the URL shown in red here with forward slashes. Alright, let's put the YouTube video into our first page. I'm going to use the HTML number one video. Alright, so we're going to come over to our code and We'll create another section, so we'll do another line break, and p, and we'll call it uh, we'll call it YouTube. All right. So we'll close off our p tag, and now we're going to use the embed tag. So embed, and we'll set the uh, width to equal six hundred, and we'll do the height can equal uh, three three eight. And we'll set the source attribute to equal the YouTube URL. So I've got it copied here, but you'll probably have to copy your own link in here. So as you can see, it's the YouTube URL, and we've got the embed set up, which is the forward slash v forward slash and then the video ID. And then I'm going to self close this tag, as embed, embed tags don't need a second closing tag. All right, cool. So I'll just go down the line and we'll save this and let's jump over and see what it looks like. So we'll come back to our first page, we'll give it a refresh and we'll go to the YouTube section and as you can see we've got the HTML5 uh, number one and it's got the YouTube player. So when you, we click on it, we've got the YouTube player, familiar YouTube player and we can full screen, we can actually go to YouTube to watch it or we can play pause, etc. Cool. This concludes our tutorial on media, as well as the main part of the HTML5 tutorial. Any extra videos in this series will be looking at HTML5 specifics or implementations. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. In the next video, we'll be looking at putting it all together to build a basic website from scratch. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.